grace and peace to you in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. It has been the tradition here at Palmasia Presbyterian Church for approximately two decades that on Palm Sunday, the church experiences a worship service that we call the Palm and Passion Service. This particular worship service takes us from Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem through the narratives of his betrayal, death, and burial. This morning in worship, the prayers and the music are the primary interpreters for the scriptures. Let us worship God together. Let us pray. Merciful God, once again we add our voices to the multitudes who across the ages have shouted Hosanna at the coming of your son. Some meant it and followed. Some were simply there because it was something to see. Others would later add their voices to the ones that shouted, crucify him. May our songs, may our prayers, and may our gifts this morning reflect our deepest desire to be more than spectators. May we truly be followers of your son, the savior. In his name we pray, amen. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve.
Good morning, friends. I'm so glad you are here with us to participate in this Palm Sunday, whether at home or here in the sanctuary. Welcome. Worship is so much better when you are here. This morning, I want to share a godly play story with you. Many of the kids know what this is, but not everybody does. Godly play is a simple way of telling the Bible story with a few objects. And what's important about godly play stories is that we wonder together. And we get to wonder together this morning. I'm going to ask you some wondering questions, and you can wonder with your families, or you can journal your wonderings and talk to God about them. A wondering question is the best kind of question because you can't find it in the Bible story that I'm telling. You find it outside of the Bible story and you wonder using your imagination. There is no right or wrong answer. And what's fun is you get to ask your own wondering questions too. Let's begin. In godly play, we walk more softly, we talk more softly, and our bodies are calmer because someone might be listening or talking to God today. This is the season of Lent. It's the time where we prepare for the mystery of Easter Everyone is on their way to Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is the place where we celebrate the Passover meal. Everybody comes for the Passover festival. And they have to travel. They celebrate this because they remember, we remember, that God led us through the waters to freedom. Jesus also, with his disciples, were entering Jerusalem this year. And when they arrived, Jesus said, go and get me a young donkey, untie it and bring it to me, and tell them that the Lord is in need of it. So the disciples brought Jesus a donkey, and Jesus sat on it. Now all the people had heard about all the amazing and wonderful things that Jesus had been doing, and they wanted to gather and see. And they really wanted Jesus to be their type of king. So they shouted, And they put their clothes down on the road in front of him. They shouted, you're right, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. They shouted it over and over again. Along with their cloaks and their clothes that they put on the road, they tore leafy branches from the countryside and brought them. We don't even know that they're palm branches, but they were leafy. They used whatever was around them to praise Jesus that day. Now this is about the time in godly play where we would give one of these to you and we would give you a palm branch so that you could wave it and say, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So you can use whatever you have at home to praise God today. Maybe from a tree, maybe your clothes to put on the floor. God can use whatever's around us to praise Jesus. Jesus did make his way all the way on the road while the crowd shouted, Hosanna in the highest, 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I wonder, I wonder what it was like to be Jesus, to be Jesus and have everybody wanting you to be their type of king, their style of king. I wonder what it would be like to have chosen a donkey, a young donkey, instead of a big, mighty horse to come into Jerusalem. I wonder if the donkey made any funny noises that day. I wonder what type of people gathered in this big crowd to shout. I wonder what it was like for them to see Jesus come through after hearing so many amazing things. I wonder what it's like to be in Jesus's type of kingdom. And I wonder what kind of King Jesus would be. I wonder what Jesus did the next day and the day after that and what would happen to him next. I wonder what you can use to praise God with whatever you have around your house today. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let's give thanks together. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks that you are the one that prepares our way. You are the one that we shout to. You are the one that we hope will save us. So Hosanna. We give thanks that you are our king, and we declare that today. Help us use whatever we have to praise you. In Jesus' name we give thanks. Amen. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar, a very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the 12, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. Whenever we gather for worship, we have the opportunity in humility and in faith to present our gifts in gratitude to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for Jesus who came into the world to save us. We praise you for the trust we have in him, for mercy undeserved, and for the love you pour out on us and on all. Give us gratitude, O God, and a great desire to serve you by taking our cross and following in the way of Jesus Christ. Amen.
On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you, follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. They went to a place called Gethsemane, 
And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Please pray with me. Holy God, with your church around the world on this day, we enter into your holy week. With the church around the world, we lift up our voices in celebration, welcoming Jesus Christ as our King. We lift up our hearts before you, declaring once again, 
Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. It is true, Lord, we do want to welcome Jesus. It is true, we would make him king of our lives. And yet, we remember in your old, old story how fickle we are, how often we change our actions, how soon we forget our identity as your family and pursue our interests, the interests that are not a part of your love. We acknowledge, O oh Lord, that we have turned from your ways and only your grace can save us. So we listen again. Through your spirit, bring the timeless truth, of the power of your gospel into our lives, into your church, and into the world. Help your church in this season to proclaim the story of your love that we saw in Jesus Christ to a broken and hurting world. May the power of your redemption be at work amongst us once again, both in our individual stories and in the story of your people as a church, as a community, as the family of Jesus Christ. As we remember the way he suffered, and the way he identified with and cared for those who were hurting, we lift up our prayers for those who suffer still. The private and personal prayers we bring with us into worship today for ourselves and for others. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. Our prayers for the community around us, for those who are hungry, for those who are sick, for those who are grieving, for those who are burdened by poverty, for those living in the midst of violence, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who live in the midst of desperate circumstances, O oh Lord, and cry out with them, Christ have mercy. Help us to find the faithfulness, the courage to draw near those who suffer this week, that we might be witnesses of the presence of Jesus Christ. We pray, O oh Lord, for the church in other places, particularly where their burden is great or where their gathering is dangerous. We pray for those who across this week carry desperate personal circumstances. We pray for one another and indeed for ourselves as we journey seeking to draw close to Jesus Christ, both to his cross and to his resurrection. In that story, nurture our faith once again, O Lord. Pour out your grace on us that we might be faithful to the power of Jesus Christ amongst us. We pray as he taught us as a family, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the kingdom and the glory forever. Amen. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man, arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked.
They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole crowd were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the cloud of, of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him re release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, 
And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, Save yourself and come down from the cross. 
In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait. Let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. 
There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid.